Uh, my headphones from the side. There's a button. Thanks. No? Okay, they're here. See, look at me. Stupid of me. <laughs> Do you hear me better now? Now I can hear you. <laughs> Apologies uh, for that. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I am. I You're am naturally blonde. Very, uh, You're so, very fresh. Well, it's it's really hot in here. It's like literally like 20 degrees. Like like a lot. So. Um, Further ado, welcome everybody to the number 13 of episodes of Morse Code by Vesa. And I have a very uh, amazing guest with me today. Uh, designer Monique Singh joins us. Uh, could you tell everyone now joining, who are you, what you do, and where are you Morse coding to us today? <laughs> Definitely. Hi everyone, so nice to be part of the Morse Code family. Like, big thank you, Fessa, for having You're me. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, my name is Monique. I am the founder and designer of my own fashion brand, Monique Singh. I'm currently uh, sitting here in my living room in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And um, yeah, I've been starting um, a little over, the, over a year my own fashion brand and um, the whole idea about my fashion brand is that it's really a representation of strength, femininity and freedom. And um, what I create are really luxury items that are all handmade and sustainably sourced. And each item has my signature trait in it, which is a um, fusion between Western elements and Indian heritage, which is definitely like a full representation of me. So everything really comes from, from the heart and I really aspire to create timeless pieces that you can keep in your closet for many seasons to come and every time when you pull it out you have again this notion of, of oh my god yes I have this item <laughs> and um, yeah the whole vision of the brand is really that when you put on one of the Monique Singh items that you're reminded that you that you are empowered to do what it is that you want to do and um, that you celebrate your own beauty in, in, in whatever way it is. That's amazing. That's really amazing. And especially like, um, because I've had, I've had, you know, in my life, I've had the luxury of having two uh, Indian flatmates. So I know what it's all about, like the Diwali and the Indian food and the culture and the dancing and all of that so i think i think it's such a amazing spin that you've actually fused that with the western western fashions um what made you end up going to design because what i've learned from my indian friends who are musicians that they didn't get to do it as easy in an indian family they were like no you need to go and be a lawyer no you need to do this and then they did that and then they're kind of like okay mom and dad now i'm gonna go and be creative did you have oh. a similar situation? Oh my God, I'm totally the stereotype then because yes, that was also <laughs> true for me. So it's actually quite funny because indeed, like I was really focused and taught to either do something in business or become a doctor or a lawyer indeed. And uh, I have actually started indeed with the business. So I did my MBA, but uh, next to the studies, I did also always follow my passion and I definitely did have uh, the freedom to pursue it. So I danced a lot since I was little. I've always had a love for fashion since I was little. So I did um, also study a fashion degree later, later on. So when I had my business degree in the pocket, it was then okay to pursue the other degree. And it was quite funny because I started my career in business and I always had that 
you know, that little itch and that passion that was always there. And then when I started, I could really see my dad looking at me like, oh my gosh, what's she doing now? <laughs> you know, like, one of her projects that she has. But then like throughout time, he did tell me, you know what? You really have a vision and a message to share. And now he's really one of my biggest supporters. So that's really nice now. <laughs> that's yeah, and, and, I, and I think to be honest, like this is, this is uh, the thing that I was growing up where like, oh, I don't want to do school. But to be honest, the, the biggest problem currently in our industry is like there's a lot of creatives, but nobody knows the business side of it. And it's a massive, massive part when you actually know that when you you know that nobody's going to come and screw you over you know your where the money is coming from what it cost and then you can create and i i personally i did my little like business course on the side for that reason because you can be as creative as much as you want but if you don't know business you can't pay bills that is the unfortunate thing so thank thank your parents that you did that because i'm sure that it comes handy um are you currently um isolating alone or with with someone else no i'm currently uh, alone in my apartment here in rotterdam actually yesterday we did hear that the uh, rules are now a bit uh, a bit more free so we are allowed to do more as of next week monday and here in the netherlands it was never really a lockdown lockdown that you were not allowed to go out anymore so in the weekends i did go to my parents on a one and a half meter distance and we did a lot of cycling which is of course the thing here to do in the <laughs> Netherlands. <laughs> I'm feeling all the stereotypes. No but it's the same thing in Finland like they love their bikes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do now in the quarantine I'm now embracing the other. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's nice to hear because like obviously here we've we've been I would say more or less free to do the same things a lot of things have been closed and now the newest thing is like it's looking that this country is in a very fast lane to open up which is crazy to me because we are now the le leaders on on the mortality rate so let's just put it this way like even though i'm allowed to go out i'm probably going to hibernate here in the house for the next two weeks anyways just to be sure um how has this uh, pandemic affected you um professionally Professionally, it really um, did give me a sort of wake-up call to really reflect and evaluate if the if the fashion industry in general is really working the way it is supposed. To, you know, if this is the best way moving forward, I definitely think that uh, we all question ourselves on the high pace and the massive production and collections that everyone is pushing out in a year. And do consumers really need uh, that high demand? Of no, they don't. <laughs> exactly. So it, it did give me a bit of a confirmation that um, my philosophy of uh, slow fashion is indeed like the right uh, way moving forward. But it, did, it does make you question, of course, like how could I still alter the production cycle even more? Are there more ways to? reduce waste are there other like uh, demand supply models that you could look into also maybe more profound questions like we always have business objectives or like goals that you're attaining to but should we also incorporate maybe goals that are linked to people and planets you know like things that are bigger than just fashion yeah and um, that you yeah maybe more give an active role in that um in that way as well so it definitely gave me a good moment to uh, to sort of like step away from all the the hectic and the chaos and the fast pace and slow down which also makes your mind a bit more clear and uh yeah to to look at these questions yeah yeah definitely i i feel like the when the pressure is lifted out of us in, in general as like whatever what we do it kind of gives you a bit of like space to actually create something now i would i would really wish I, i've been thinking about a lot of the the sort of uh, times when you know you used to go to middle school and you would get one pair of sneakers that your parents would buy for the year and then those had to last and then when they, they those broke you got new ones i wish that this would be like applied again like buy one great pair of and when that's done, then you replace it. And I think that kind of amplifies like one style to me. 
rather than having like all of the the, the same crap that everybody else has. <laughs> totally. I think it also gives a bit more of that notion of gratitude, you know, because if you're making that or you're buying that one pair of shoes, then you're really taking some time and effort and, and you're willing to make a bit of an investment for good quality. And it's really something that you cherish. I, I do think indeed that in like the society where you just buy left, right and center, that you don't really appreciate things anymore and everything you can throw away and buy a new item tomorrow it also makes you more like blunt, I think, a bit more mellow on the things that are there. Yeah, and, and it's it's almost like the there's there's a lot of people who are saying like yay or nay. I do get it. Some people are like, oh, but we have to make a living. But it's like the same thing. It's like diamonds you can't buy with two euros. You pay for a certain thing because it takes a certain time for it to grow naturally inside of a rock. So you pay for that process and you still buy it even though how, how much it will cost. You will still buy it. You buy one maybe in five years, but you buy one if you want one. So it's the same thing. If there's a like the right price to the right product, people will buy it and that will bring the bread bread to the to the table, especially for throughout the supply chain, you know, from the beginning to the end. I agree. It's also like that the craftsmanship and the skills are back to the forefront again and that's them really clear as to why you have that little investment and then it also really brings that benefit. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, and um, you are known to be a luxury designer that is culture conscious. Could you tell tell uh, everyone what that means to you? What what cu being culture conscious mean to you? I mean, culture conscious to me, I think for me, it's really a celebration of of the different cultures and that no matter what your background is or your heritage that you should you should wear it with pride and really celebrate it so i think when i look at myself when i was little that sometimes i didn't really know whether i always fit in or sometimes i felt that i was changing my behavior or my identity according to whether it was a family situation or whether i was at work or school like i kind of adapted myself but it would have been so much easier and nicer for, for myself if I just always was the full me. And the full me is also really embracing all the cultures that I've um, lived in, that is my heritage, because there's beauty in diversity. And I think that's really the notion that I'd like to share. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's, a, in, it's a very important thing um, to mention because a lot of people, they, I come from, you know, so-called Scandinavia. I call Finland is Nordic country. So we're, we're the sort of like wannabe Scandies. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're the rebels somewhere in between. But but anyways, like that, I've always come across this type of uh, people adoring the sort of lifestyle and all of this type of thing. But the reality when, when I was growing up, uh, especially for, for kids who migrated because of war or their came because of their parents had jobs and so on and so forth. It wasn't really easy for them because I remember going to a middle school that was one of the only ones that would take all of these kids in bulk because they were equipped to teach them in, uh, in English as well. And I remember that it wasn't easy, you know, it's not easy to be the, the only boy with big curly afro when everybody else has blue eyes. So this is what I, what I always try to say to people that, you know, you can't take take it so like um, obvious that yeah you have a person living somewhere in these countries and it's not there that, that the struggle is still there it's still present up to this day to people who live in these societies who are not from there did you ever uh, have, have to go through any of this yeah I think it's indeed exactly as you say I think when I was little in all of my classes I was always on the class picture the only brown dot on the picture you know like you were always the different one or the one that um, yeah, was coming from a heritage or a culture that people didn't necessarily know or you were eating food in the evening that people had no idea what it was. So sometimes it was, a, um, you know, you can embrace things that are different and really acknowledge it, but there are also still a lot of people who sort of fear the things that are different or that are not the same or they make the 
passive aggressive comments that kind of make you smaller in, in, in not an obvious way, but it does impact you. So yeah, I totally agree with you that it's super important and still very relevant. Uh, yeah, and I, and I mean like kids can be cool, like they're not <laughs> the worst. Like, you know, I, I, was, I was bullied heavily for nine years and for stupid reasons of me being a hair model when I was 14. Just because I had highlights, that was a reason. Or because I did this, that was a reason. And it was like, it's always, there's always a reason. But I always keep on saying to everyone, like, uh, just brush it off because it's, it's, it's something that is like gold that glimmers and everybody's jealous of that. That's why they come for you. So you just have to be like, bye. See you later. <laughs> Uh, it, it's the only way because you know at the end of the day you, you're living for for yourself and for the people that you love and I think that's enough to focus we have enough problems in this world to throw mud on others um, totally how, has this this pandemic uh, made any sort of impact on you as a person on a personal level well definitely um... First of all, it's completely crazy how in one moment the whole world uh, stops uh, going as everyone is, is knowing or having known that it has been for so many years. So it definitely gave me also that moment of slowing down really because I was like running around every day from appointment to appointment and really having set goals for myself and kind of always being focused on the goals and maybe less being present in the moment as I wish uh, I could have been. So that has been a good moment to sort of like slow down, be grateful, also really connect with um, the people that are important to you, like your family and your friends. Maybe you now finally also have the time to reach out to those friends that you always say, yeah, I'll call you uh, then and then, but you never really take that <laughs> moment to do so. <laughs> So in that sense, uh, it has really given me a whole lot of peace and eye openers on what's really important and what are we all doing to the planet, you know? It's crazy how if the world stops for two weeks only, there are dolphins swimming in Venice, you know? Like, it's crazy how fast that can go. Yeah, and Mother Nature always wins, just for the record. So who, anybody who's trying to do any, any sort of game, don't do it. You, you will not win. Um, How's it been for you? For, for me, it's, it's 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 been sort of like it had, let's just put it this way, like it proved my point that I was thinking already before. So I was like, it, I was like, I got justification to a lot of things. Like I said that in the times like these, some people shine brighter than ever and some people just gotta go. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, in, in that sense, it's been yet, yeah, uh, it's been very refreshing. And it's it's been refreshing to realize and say to like I'm a perfectionist. I love to work. I need, you know, I'm always like trying to impress myself apart yes. apart from anybody else. I don't care what somebody else thinks of me, but I want to impress myself. Um, and I put all of this crazy, um, like, uh, you know, uh, I need to jump this high, and then I need to jump here, and then I need to do that. And so it's it's been very good for me to reflect. Take, take a little breather and realize that the world is not going to come to an end whether I do things or I don't do things. The world will still keep on going. The sun goes up and it comes down whether I'm in it or not. <laughs> uh, so so it, in that sort of sense, it's been very freeing. Very, very yeah. freeing. And it's almost like um, it's put me back to what I used to be when I was younger. And I, yeah. and I really cherish that. Like I feel like I've gained a part that was so, so many years lost of I feel like I got it back. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Hmm. So, how does, apart from cycling in the canals of Rotterdam, uh, <laughs> does uh, a, a new normal day of uh, Monique Singh look like? Well, actually, it's funny. I do uh, still wake up actually relatively early. And uh, I usually walk outside for like an hour around 8 a.m. because then there are not so many people outside. And it's a good moment to sort of like connect with nature and to really have a good mindset for the rest of the day. And then when I come home, I either do some yoga or some breakfast and sort of like have an easy start of the day. And then I do definitely still have my nine to six uh, working day. 
But because we're in solitude, of course, it does really help my creative juices to flow more freely and to take really those moments for the big blocks of things that you want to do. And uh, we do have these new habits of a family video call at 8.30 p.m. every day now. So that's quite okay. nice. So yeah, there are these new habits that uh, sneak in as well. And yeah, a lot of podcasts, checking up on trends and things that are changing in the industry. It's, uh, it's a lot of knowledge gaining, I would say also. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe like this is the golden time of like... Uh do it yourself, learn yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't cut your hair by yourself, please. You know, we've seen <laughs> that of those. Um, what is the best part of your job for you? I think the best part of my job is um, that it really comes from the heart. Like it's really something that uh, it's very close to me and what I'm producing is really a reflection of myself on a plate to the to the world and you know it has taken some years for me to come to this point to be really um, sort of like ready to to share my work with the world because it's also of course quite uh, I don't know exciting to share that with so many people and you know if it comes from such a place then I think Whatever happens, you've always succeeded. And if there are people out there who can relate to the vision of, of feeling empowered to follow your dreams and to celebrate all, all that is beautiful about yourself when you put on my clothes, I think I, I can be the most happiest person in the world. Yeah. That's really, really, really beautifully said. Yeah, because I, I, believe, I believe in in, in the sort of way that whatever you want to achieve, you have to plant the seed. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a good good lesson for everybody to learn that things don't happen overnight. You know, it's a process. And especially when it comes to being creative. And uh, we talked about this with Monique in our uh, little pre-conversation before coming, coming to this, that, you know, putting yourself out there or your designs out there is never easy. It's scary as F, you know. <laughs> It's not like, I, I don't, I, I do not know a single person, even the most self-absorbed person I know, do not feel like when they put themselves out there that it's that, okay, this is going to be a absolute hit. You know, it's, there's always yeah. the fear, fear behind that what if, what if this and what if that. And like I, like I told you that, you know, even for me, now doing this the 13th show i still get nervous the e equally every single from the first up till to this and hopefully for for all of the future ones because mm. it keeps me on my toes and that means that it's going to be a good show otherwise what's the point even doing it uh <laughs> what do what do we what can we expect to see from you in the future you have done several uh, like great collections is there anything that you could share that are you possibly branching out to some sort of fusion things or collaborations or any of this sort? Well, uh, I really hope to continue with producing many more collections and keeping definitely my signature traits. If I were to daydream on possible collaborations, I would definitely find it very interesting to potentially venture out to bags like I think that's also really nice or or even uh, a home you know like uh, pillows cushions or, or things that um, that make your house really sanctuary that uh, that something to do with that also seems something I could be really intrigued about yeah Amazing. <laughs> what could you tell that is your signature piece what are you known for? So it's like if it's one thing, what are you known for? I think it's definitely the the floral patterns that are embroidered in the um, in the different pieces. So I think that is definitely one of my signature traits. And I don't know if you know the the long voluminous skirts that have. Well, I do. I've seen, I've seen it all. <laughs> yeah. <I've seen> it <laughs> all. <laughs> well, so so that one I think it has been. Uh, one that, that received a lot of positive uh, feedback, which I was very grateful about. Or I should actually ask you, what would you think that my signature piece 
I, 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 for me, it's is exactly how you are descri uh, described. Unapologetic. It's it's the type of thing that what comes often with uh, very like area case specific traditional garments or um, type of elements that different type of areas have. You know, there's always from a fashion perspective, you might think that it's too traditional. And I think when it becomes, when it's about fashion, it's about like when the fashion, fashionable wearability with that sort of, um, what is the word? The, that sort of inheritance mix, that's when it becomes fashion in my eyes. And that's what you have done. Instead of going the obvious way of uh, like, okay, I'm going to do this sari with a little twist. To me, that would still be traditional wear. And I would feel as a person who is from Finland, I would not feel comfortable of wearing anything of that sort because I would feel like it's offensive. And that, that's, that, and that's, that's where I think that you've been clever, that you can really see the, um, the Rotterdam and where you grew up. Because it's, that's the Scandinavian, the clear lines with that yeah. amazing embroidery that becomes functional and it's not a party wear it's not a um a national outfit or a costume and mm -hmm. I, I and i think that's that's why i like your designs very much because that it has the flair but it's not too uh, forceful because mm -hmm. if you know what i mean there are a lot of designers who are forcing ideas or yeah. their or their um point of view and that's, yeah. and that's what I love. It's timeless. I think timeless fashion is the best fashion that there is. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> looking forward to using your pieces as soon as this lockdown is lifted. So. Oh, I'm looking forward to work with you. <laughs> so, so fashion god and all of the gods like let let let, let us the huma humanity breathe and hopefully we've learned our lesson. And we can continue in a, in a different format. Um, since now that we've talked about what is the greatest parts of being a designer, what would you say are the most difficult? Mm. That what you struggle with? Yeah, I think sometimes um, what I found difficult is that you have all these ideas or your vision in your head, but obviously you need to translate what's in here to your designs or to articulate it also in words for your brand mission or, or purpose and it's like this um like this journey you have to go through but sometimes it's also a lonely journey because it's you and all of your thoughts always, and like, it's always lonely <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and sometimes it can be a bit of a battle against yourself to because you have indeed, as you say, the expectations that are yay high, but you, and um, yeah, so it's a bit of how does that all come together in a way that it's really how it's intended to be in your head. And then the second thing I think what I've really learned is that it's really precious when you found that circle of um, people around you that you feel safe and trusted to share all of your um, brand uh, secrets and like your baby with other people um, because it's 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 quite difficult right to find people that really connect with you that understand what you're trying to do and then can make it even bigger and more beautiful than what you can do alone so um, yeah I think now I really have like a good set of people around me where I feel really good and comfortable with but um, yeah, there have been uh, some bumps along the way where you, of course, learn. <laughs> <Been a lot. laughs> many times, many times, and I'm sure there's going to be bumps along the way in the future. Totally, totally. <laughs> but, but that's 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 what I would say as well. It's like because no man is an island. We can't do this alone. That's a pure fact. Even even how much we would like to think we could, but we can't. And uh, and I think like I can I can definitely agree with similar type of experiences. Like I, that, I think my biggest downfalls in the industry is like uh, putting too much value on people that I should not put them the value to. Because there's a lot of people who say that they 
want to back you up, but they just want your ideas. And we've all been there. Like, it's definitely the ones who create. And it's very difficult because, you know, we can be very sensitive at times. So, yeah. so, we, so we do need, so we do need like a little bit of the, that sort of uh, petting and uh, comfort every now and then. And, and I think there's, I, I, I've learned that it's empowering to speak about it openly rather than uh, pretend to be a fortress or in like a rock because it's not reality in exactly. that type of way. Um, I, I would like to know more about um, how would you actually produce all of the sort of traditional embroidery? Like what is your like supply chain or do you have like amazing group of women who are do doing it in uh, in Rotterdam or where, 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 what is the process? I'm really interested about yeah. that. So uh, the embroidery is indeed all handmade. Uh, so for the first collection, we had a studio in India where like, it was really handmade and then uh, shipped to the Netherlands. And for the second collection, we did also have uh, it in the atelier here in Amsterdam where it was made. So I do find it super important that um, I really have control about the production process because we see often enough all these horrible stories or horror stories in fashion that things are made somewhere far away and actually the working conditions are not optimal or uh, or these types of things. So I did make a conscious choice that it's in a, a working studio here in Amsterdam where um, there is like this beautiful group of artisans who still know all of the crafts and, and all of this beauty that is actually quite difficult to find here in the Netherlands. And um, so that's one thing. And then in terms of the fabrics, I really try to, or really try to, I always pick the ISO certified uh, fabrics or also try to use, you know, like a, a bit more uh, alternatives for fabrics, like the faux leather and like, let's opt always for organic cotton, like things that uh, are maybe not so mainstream, but are definitely um, pushing a bit the boundaries of, of good alternatives that are better for our planet. Um, so yeah, that's a bit uh, how we're rolling these days. <laughs> but yeah, but that's, that's, that's really amazing because that's also a way of um, sustaining that craftsmanship, you know, that it, it will still have, it will have a continuity for the next generation outside of India, wherever, where, wherever that type of specific um, trade and technique came from and i think that is very very lovely that like i've always I, i've always um loved the fact that because I'm, i am a bit of a nomad you know my mom lives in spain i live here in london and you know sometimes i i miss especially when i'm getting older i miss the sort of ah uh, like i want that little thing that i was so used to when i was a child and i've kind of had to give up of all of the, my sort of tradition, even though I don't think Finnish people have that many more, that much tradition other than sauna and drinking too much vodka. But... <laughs> um, That's not a bad tradition to have. <laughs> no, no, but it's like, at, at least I'm lucky that I like to do it with people, not by myself at my house. That's what the Finnish are known for, the Finnish melancholy, you know. it's It can get pretty tough. Um, we are just about on the halfway so now is your chance everybody who who is coming joining all of that if you have any questions to uh monique there is a question box send it down way i already have plenty of uh free questions from people but i'm just putting it out there so i can get you active um how are you currently feeling right now just as a person to person yeah, actually I'm feeling very hopeful and uh, very positive because I think that now that we're sort of like slowly but surely moving back into out of the pandemic that I really feel that a lot of us are very committed and uh, focused on on changing things and creating a better tomorrow and I truly believe that uh, if we keep that notion and and being stronger together that we really do make that change that it's not after two weeks that we all forgotten what has happened and we're back into our old routines but really live a bit more mindfully so i'm very hopeful how about yourself i i am as well but i'm not so sure it's going to happen that fast as i would want it to happen because because i like 
I've, I've always I've always thought and my mom was a wise woman who always said that men will always destroy themselves with their greed because because there's there's always always going to be the sort of element even the most bright individuals who come from poverty and as soon as they they start to get comfortable that's what wealth and money brings is comfort yeah so I hope that people would remember this because you know this was definitely and still is a situation that not necessarily money can buy you out of you know you can't get a house in heaven you can't bring your crap with you when you when you depart from this planet as much as some people think they can but you cannot um yeah so so i would i would wish people to be a bit more compassionate also to remember not to repeat the same mistakes that our forefathers in the past generations did you you know yeah. where there's there's a lot of this type of thing now people are talking about nostalgia and all of this but even in within that nostalgia for for me as a as a white person to say a lot of that nostalgia was uh built on um other people's pain and you know mm -hmm. efforts and all of this so to me that is not nostalgia for me the nostalgia is something that we as a nation will establish for the future and for the future generations because I, I think we're we're living in a de like a definitely interesting times. There's a lot of yeah. power shifting going on, and now is the time. Like if people unite, we can really make a difference in so many levels. So I'm I'm hopeful. You have to be optimistic, but I'm still yeah. a bit cautious. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said it very beautifully, indeed. It's quite funny also to see in our own industry that. Luckily, also the titans, you know, like the big ones are making bold moves into changing our ways of working. Like Yves Saint Laurent, who's deciding not to do any runway shows anymore in 2020. Like, I think it is definitely making other brands scratch their heads and like, okay, wait, are we really changing the rules of the game? You know, I, I do think that that is also helping. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's and, 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 to, and to be honest, like I, I, I still don't understand how and why a lot of a lot of the type of you know the format of show showcasing your collections like all of the big houses did in their you know in the beginning of their sh showing in general. Like why does it have to be all of a sudden? Why do you have to have two thousand people inside of that room? Why can't you have? hundred key people people who actually work in the industry people who can <laughs> actually say and put it in the right type of format why is that not enough why do you have to have the the sister of a fashion editor who sells pasta in the supermarket there in the front row why you don't need to be there you know it's yeah. like that's just like my personal opinion it's it's almost like if somebody would say to me that's how you are not a key person to come and see the show for X, Y, and Z reason, I said like, I'm totally fine with that. Mm -hmm. All the best, you know, great. Yeah. Because if 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 if, yeah. if I can't contribute to anything to that designer or it's not my style or whatever, I don't need to be there. I really, yeah. I really, I really don't need to be there. <laughs> you know, part of the the circus. So I hope that you know there there is. You know that type of element that maybe we can get it back more towards the industry yeah back to the core and the hearts and the yeah. craftsmanship and not the ooh -la -la that comes with it maybe yeah yeah because that's for for most of us that is not the reason why we're in this industry and and met like a lot of a lot of my peers are very happy that this is shifting now because this is kind of like that separates you know the, the grain from <laughs> The other 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 crap because you know if, if you have the skill to back it up you will prevail one way or another if not then all the best you know <laughs> yeah, true. Well, uh, yeah so what is time for questions <laughs> yeah we're just about there but I'm gonna ask my my famous last my own question uh, what is the first thing you're gonna do when this lockdown is lifted Oh, totally the hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> I was like totally nervous for this call, like trying to hide my need for the hairdresser. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the split ends need their little treatment. <laughs> what about any color? Do you do color? 
Yeah, I, I do have a bit of like brown in my in my hair, but the tone has definitely morphed into something else during this quarantine. So yeah, that that would be a um, like a little thing I definitely want to do. <laughs> okay, so how about, you? Uh, how about me? The first thing, like I've, I've, I've answered this question so many times. I just want to go dancing, but like I said, with caution, I will wait for two weeks before I'm going to go anywhere. Then I'm going to dress and wear something that is very easy to wipe off, just in case somebody touches me or spills anything on me, and I just like wipe it off. <laughs> I have a lot. I have a lot of materials like that, so I'm going to be fine. So that's what I'm. What what I want to do. And as soon as as I can travel, I want to go and see my mom in Gran Canaria. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Let's so put that on the bucket list that we'll go dancing someday in the future. Well, it's it's evident. evident. As long as I live out, I'm going to go dancing, that's for sure. <laughs> um, first question that was sent to me on a pre, pre thing. What do you see as a positive in all of this negativity? Just as a, as a general. Um, yeah, I definitely think that uh, the positive is that there are so many eye openers for people. It's like we're being forced to slow down or being forced to stand still and only when you stand still you're able to deal with all the thoughts and and the things you see around you and uh yeah i definitely that is a very positive thing and and that we're thinking of ways to to serve our planet better uh next question have you done any new designs during this lockdown? Yes, I have actually uh, did grab my sketchbook because I'm still a very old fashioned pencil with paper kind of a designer. And it was actually really nice because it's like, as I was saying, the creative juices are flowing more freely and there was no pressure. So I was just like sketching away. So I have done some sketching, yes. Great. Then now we have one come through here. Uh, <laughs> What would you uh, advise for someone who wants to uh, pursue fashion design to do? What would you, would you say is the first steps? Yeah. First, I would uh, advise you to always trust yourself and your gut feel and to always stay very close to, to yourself. If somewhere in your gut you're feeling that something is not the right way, to move forward or that you're a bit intimidated by all of these opinions of other people that are experts in their field, do choose to, to choose you basically and your decision. And um, then I would also say that there will definitely be bumps and failures along the way, but really take that as a notion to start again and do it more intelligent the next time around. Because you really should enjoy the journey and, and the little moments and little milestones and and take it as a blessing that you're pursuing your passion, which is already the biggest thing, I think, that most people don't get a chance to do. Yeah, that is very important because I, I, I personally think that if one wants to be a great designer, you can't just design what other people tell you to design and this is this has become a massive thing in the industry in a couple of years that you are almost like forced to you know designers in the big houses are like almost like directed towards like you have to do this now or this massive fashion forecasting agency saying like oh and this season x y and z everybody has to do pink and i would say f that i'll do blue <laughs> And, and and that's that's the sort of thing is like you I, I think design is as its best it's something that's forcing something that somebody else didn't even see yeah that is very true and implementing new idea ideas you know feelings and all of this sort of stuff for me fashion has always been a reflection of society it's not a man or a woman telling me pink is the color <laughs> Totally, you're absolutely right. Maybe, by the way, from a business point of view, I would then also give a little challenge as to why are you, uh, like, what is your reason to enter the industry? You know, like, what is your unique uh, element that is really you 
uh, that you bring to to a market that is currently like saturated with of course so many other brands so just to challenge yourself a little bit that you can explain it in two sentences who you are like that always helps you also i think in making choices moving forward yeah and it's a, it's a great great advice because a lot of people uh come to this interest, industry because they're attracted to the glitz and glamour and the supermodels, the money and the great clothes. There is no money if that's <laughs> the only thing what you're after. You need to do the groundwork. There's a reason why Louis Vuitton has billions because they've been around forever and they started with luggage. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have so many different other fields as well that are bringing in some cash yeah, as well. Yeah, because brands are not built in overnight it's like the same thing it's like a lot of people don't know that nokia cell phones that come from finland they did not start as making cell phones they were main, making rubber tires for tractors no, and mm. and wellies <laughs> or yeah and, and that's that is how the great nokia ha had its humble beginnings so and then develop their business idea into something else. So this, yeah. is, this is something that I always tell everybody, give yourself time, you know. So yeah. If you keep on going, soon you soon you realize all of the skill set and, and your vision coming to life. But you just have to keep on moving and enjoy the, the ride, so to speak. Definitely. <laughs> um, who is your idol? Oh gosh, I have so many. In terms of designers that I really have the deepest respect for is on the one hand Alexander McQueen because I think he has like this genius mind that that you know that sort of like transformed fashion into art and challenged all the, the barriers of, of what beauty um, is about and uh, I really really think that's really cool you know like he's indeed as you say forcing or like opening the world to see things in a different perspective. Like women were really warriors or people that you actually feared of instead of the, the typical sex symbol. And he had like amazing craftsmanship skills which were out of this world. And then from the Indian um, design field, I really adore the work from Sabia Sachi because it is like, if you think about abundance and Indian culture, they have like these embroidery details that are so meticulous and so precise and it's an abundance of colors, of, of, of fabrics. Everything is such a celebration of life and femininity that I just love it. I cannot help it but love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I've, I've seen so many Bollywood movies and I was just, I'm always just like, how the hell did they do all of this stuff? It's <laughs> like, it's so intricate. And especially for for a kid from a Nordic country, that something what you, we we would call traditional is a potato sack with like a little bit of stitching. On. <laughs> so it's, it's it's definitely it's not sexy, it's not glamorous, or any of any of those above. Um, what has been your uh, personal triumph so far? It doesn't have to be design. But what has it been so far? Well, maybe the moment that I really decided to step out in the world with my designs was really a big moment for myself because as we were talking about in the beginning uh, of our conversation that uh, in the start I was really protective and sort of like anxious indeed what the world would say about my, my brand, about me. Like it also has my name, obviously, so it couldn't be more personal. And uh, so, so the fact that I sort of like believed in myself and sort of like that this is going to be something awesome and I'm completely embracing the journey and, and the kickoff, whatever it may bring. For me, it was a, it was a big deal, you know? I, I can sometimes contemplate too much and like, <laughs> what should I do? But this was just, I'm going to do this. This is awesome, you know? I think that was a personal triumph, just the, like the really kick off of it. Amazing. What is your star sign? I'm a Leo. Ah, I'm a Cancer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get along with Leos very well, that's why I had to ask. You, you seem like a, like a leader. Um, 
then I forgot to ask this question. As you are, the word unapologetic uh, <laughs> is very often attached to you and your designs. Where does that come from? Yeah, and uh, it actually was a very sort of like easy choice for me to call the collection unapologetic because it's so related to the core essence of the brand. Like I want, uh, or I see the Monique Singh woman as somebody who is unapologetically free, free to pursue her dreams and free in, in being herself and not caring what other people are, are thinking or saying about it. You just trailblaze away and do your thing that you want to do in life. And like, it's also like a message track that I feel like sometimes I need to hear it myself, you know, <laughs> like to be reminded of that mantra almost in life that life is just so much better and nicer and more enjoyable if you're unapologetically doing what you set out to do in life. That's, that's amazing. That's exactly the type of woman that I like. <laughs> and I like men, like, <laughs> but that's the type of women I, I, I like. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great message, especially in the times like this, that do not take, take it for granted. Like you might be young, uh, middle-aged, a child, an uh, older person. You can't take it for granted that you're going to be here tomorrow. You know, we've, we've all had a proof of that. As, as long as I am not descended from the Zeus, the God, so I don't have a free pass, so I'm going to be humble. <laughs> I would recommend <laughs> for everybody else to do the same and always remember just never take anything for granted and do the things that you wanted to do yesterday, do it now, because yeah. you might not have the time to do it at some point. Life is too yeah. short for that. Okay, do you know what time it is now? It is the notorious quick fire round. <laughs> so, how this works, I'm going to ask uh, questions about like this or that. For you, you, uh, you can answer the way that you want, neither, it's, it's up to your... Um... Okay, oh now I'm nervous, okay. <laughs> no, don't be, this is just, this is just fun. Okay. Okay, let's start. Roses or daisies? Roses. Definitely roses. Plain or pattern? Patterned. Linear or abstract? Abstract. Cake or cookies? <laughs> <laughs> to drive or to be driven? To drive. I like I like having control and secretly speeding, yes. <laughs> Christmas or Midsummer? Christmas. I'm a sucker for Christmas. Heritage or New Age? Bring them together. <laughs> skirt or trousers? Depends on the day, but today I'll go for skirt. <laughs> Heels or flats? Heels, even though I haven't worn them in the last eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting for you. Then the next question, red or pink? Red. Apples or oranges? Oranges. Travel or stay at home? Travel. Dance off or sing off? Dance off. Fast we should have a dance. <laughs> yes, we should. I used to be a dancer, you know, you might get run for your money. <laughs> Fashion show or presentation? Hmm. I'll opt for the presentation. Mulan or Princess Jasmine? Princess Jasmine, all the way. Mickey Mouse or Goofy? Mickey. Wealth? Or happiness? Happiness, definitely happiness. Hollywood or Bollywood? I'm gonna go for bo Bollywood. Amazing. Yeah. That concludes the quick fire round. <laughs> uh, was fun. We, yeah, like I told you, it's not like everybody's like, oh my god, where is he gonna ask? Um, <laughs> for, for everybody who is still, still with us, I have pinned, there's um, Monique's 
about section so there's more that sort of more in-depth trivial information about what what Monique does her designs and all of that that we just purely I'm not that talented to squeeze in one hour even much as I would want to but the information is there um, is there any last words you would want to tell everybody who joined in and obviously because this is going to be saved forever to, to the god of internet well, I did want to thank everyone for for joining and for listening. And also, a big thank you to you, Fesa, because it's really a big. Uh, I don't know, like I'm, I'm super happy that we have this conversation and that you allowed me to be part of your beautiful Morse code family. And any, any just, day. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. So thank you. You're very welcome, and uh, I'm looking forward to see you live when we can travel. Hopefully, you're coming to London. Uh, I work a lot with your PR pop, so big shout out to them as well for making this happen because this is actually the first time that we ever met. We've spoken once before, but I'm, I'm sure know. that that's going to be a, a great, great friendship for years to come. I have a good reason yeah. to come, come to Rotterdam, I've never visited. But yeah. for, for everyone else, Thank you for joining. Have a great week and stay safe. And if the lockdowns are lifted, go, don't go too crazy. Thank you, Monique. Mm -hmm. It was an absolute pleasure. Same here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.